Welcome to Dragon Slayer Update. This month, the defending champs battle Suffolk, volleyball faces the reigning district champs, and the story of three players returning to HCC women's soccer in an all-new Dragon close-up. Men's soccer leads off. The Dragons take on CCBC Essex. Mike Leshner anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Howard is playing well together. Their defense is working hard, and it's led to a four-game win streak. They're doing it without a true goalkeeper. Drew Kalish is injured, and Garrett Peters is serving a red card. Defender Eric Gonzalez will don the orange shirt for Howard. He's made five saves during the red card suspension. CCBC Essex enters the game ranked number four in the Division I national poll. The Knights have done it the hard way, playing a brutal non-conference schedule. Essex is 3-0 against ranked Division I opponents. Howard looks to upset the Knights. Let's go to the Dragon's Land. First half, Essex pressing early. Kyle Mizell, Guillermo Almiral, he's on side. Eric Gonzalez, Almiral rebound. Gonzalez passes the early test from Essex. Tremendous work. Emmanuel Wright, Ezekiel Ebenezer heading to the box, has a little room. Kyle Six is there, can't get the rebound. Wright flies in. Ian Evans now. The clearance rolls to Elliot Quinteros. That one could come back to haunt Howard. 21st minute, throw in for the Dragons. Wright, nice footwork. Evans, as soon as Evans turns, he looks at Quinteros. Edge of the penalty area. Quinteros gets behind the defender. To Evans, he scores! The chemistry between Quinteros and Evans is on display, and it's given Howard the lead. Corner kick for CCBC Essex. Almiral takes it. Justin Ornelas gets on the other end of it, and it only took three minutes for Essex to find the equalizer. 50-50 ball. Armand Kanugba wins it for Howard. Curtis Kozmowski's going deep to Ebenezer. Ornelas doesn't clear. Evans makes him pay, sends it wide to Ebenezer. Stops on a dime to Evans. Evans sending a message. We're Howard Community College. We're not messing around. Only took four minutes. Division three Howard reclaims control against the number four team in Division one. Right over the top towards Ebenezer. Up against two defenders, he gets wide and forces a corner, hitting it off the leg of Kurt Daisley. Ensuing corner kick. Sam Rivera short. Rivera again. High ball. John Jones goes up for Howard. Casey Fleischel, what a strike! The volley is absolutely hammered by Fleischel. Tremendous power, perfect placement. Nicholas Jones down the field. Jones, marching downhill, gets down the side. Still Jones, crosses to Roman Bubalo. There's your response. Essex steals momentum with a quick counter. Mizell, edge of the box, sees Bubalo on the back post. Gonzalez with the save, his seventh save of the half, standing tall against one of the best teams in the country. Essex looking for the equalizer. Mizell has gotten to a wide position, gets across into the box. Tyler Kostopoulos breaks it up. 81st minute, CCBC Essex head coach Joe Fiedler wants a foul here, doesn't get it, voices his frustration. And the official goes over and books him, points towards the technical area. Tense exchange between the ref and coach. One minute later, Rivera connects with Wright. What a move by Wright, he blows by the defender. Challenge by Ornelas, let's see what the official does here. Red card is the decision. CCBC Essex will play with 10 men the remainder of the match. 86th minute, Wright. Back to Ebenezer. Shakes the defender. Ebenezer off the post. Daisley lays out to win possession for Essex. Excellent hustle from the freshman out of Eastern Tech High School. Jones shows similar hustle, wins it back for Essex along the far touchline. And look out, what a run by Sean Geary. He's got speed to the outside, taken down inside the box, awarded a penalty. Lightning quick counterattack from CCBC Essex. Sean Geary up against Eric Gonzalez. He's made 10 saves so far for Howard. And Geary ties the game with 10 men. Essex is not done yet. After a throw in, the official runs back to the Essex sideline. And Coach Fiedler will have to watch the rest of this game on Dragon's Lair Update. It's their second red card, but Essex will not lose another player, still playing with 10. To overtime, first team to score wins. 
Right after the overtime kickoff, Christopher Lee catches Izzy Ebenezer on the run, and look out, Ebenezer hits it. Howard wins. The Dragons beat the number four team in dramatic fashion. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Ezekiel, take me through that last goal. How'd that feel? Um, um, it was a great feeling, great goal, good pass for my teammate, and yeah. So talk about the performance of Eric today, stepping up and playing goalkeeper. Um, great guy, great goalkeeping skills. Just, just he's a just a great teammate, great teammate. So you did a phenomenal job. Is this your first time playing goalkeeper? Uh, yes, actually. It's actually my, my first time, you know, but uh, I was a little bit nervous, you know. But it's, it's, it's a great win, and um, I had teammates backing me up, and so that's the most important part. So after the uh, first goal got in, what was going through your head there? Uh, I was uh, a little bit nervous because uh, we were up one, and I didn't want to let another goal in from our staff. But uh, fortunately, they, uh, they tied. But uh, we, we battled through, and we got the result. So that's the most important part. Congratulations on the spectacular win, folks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Dragons Letter Update, I'm Matt Stovall. It's time for women's soccer. Howard takes on Suffolk. The Dragons enter the match ranked number three in the national poll. After a 3-2 and two start, Howard has been flat-out dominant. The Dragons are riding a four-game win streak and have allowed just one goal in September. Howard is undefeated against Division III programs dating back to 2012. The Dragons are 12-0-4 against D3 opponents over the last two seasons. Suffolk is one of the four teams to play Howard to a draw. The Sharks enter the game with a 2-1-1 record. Suffolk is looking to get back on track offensively. After scoring 14 goals in their first two games, the Sharks have struggled to find the back of the net. Howard and Suffolk take the field next. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. Early on, here's a chance for Suffolk. Maria Raimondi has a little room at the edge of the box. Raimondi! Darcy Bazzioni with the save. Throw in for the Dragons. Jen Craven goes and gets it and connects with Lisa Bianchini inside the 18. Bianchini finishes high. The All-American is showing some skill, really influencing the game. 29th minute, Divina St. Peter, another returner from last year's region champion team. St. Peter. Bianchini. Bianchini says, there you go, have some of that. Lisa Bianchini can do no wrong at this moment. Howard in control. Second half, we're in the 51st minute. The goal kick goes right to St. Peter and she makes the goalkeeper pay. 30 yard strike from the sophomore out of Laurel High School. Abigail Vallone over the top towards Alexis Rubenstein. Liz Parks beats her to the ball and wins it for Howard. Parks. Bianchini takes a look at her options, picks out the run of Rebecca Coglin. Excellent ball. Two Suffolk defenders strip it away. Craven breaks up the clear. Kanifa Mullings with a touch. Aresiki Romero finally clears it up for Suffolk. Bianchini. Through ball to Coglin. Coglin is in, but the shot is off the mark. Megan Jackson sends it in the direction of Craven. Poor touch from the Sharks' back. Craven jumps on the loose ball. Craven! We're witnessing something special here in Columbia, Maryland. A team reaching their potential, marching towards the postseason with volition. Bianchini takes the corner for Howard. Good high ball, and it finds the back of the net. Another dominant performance from Coach Seagroves' Dragons. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Kanifa, you were our analyst last year. What's your analysis after this match? Um, I feel like we played a very hard game. Um, our coaches definitely had us playing a, a drop back and disperse kind of game, and it kind of worked. Actually, it worked very well. So what about Suffolk made this a good matchup for your team? Um, I don't think they were as skilled as we were. I mean, we've, we've done a lot of work on uh, playing the feet and getting the ball like exactly where it needs to be and finishing, and we did that and took them like we had them against the ropes. So. One of the reasons why was Lisa Bianchini with her hat trick. Lisa, how did it feel getting that hat trick out there today? Um, it felt really good. Um, I think it was much needed, um, especially after our slow start. I was just trying to get the team pumped up, and it worked. 
So it seems like you're on an offensive tear of late. But what's going right right now? I don't know. I mean, I finally think it's just clicking. We're switching the field. We're playing defeat. I finally, everyone's just getting in. The scoring's very dispersed. So I think that's a great thing. Tremendous team win, ladies. Thank you. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. If you're interested in a career in the in-demand healthcare field, Howard Community College can help you get there from here. Consider working as a diagnostic medical sonographer. They use ultrasound and other special equipment to create images and conduct tests on the body's organs and tissues. Diagnostic medical sonographers play an important role in the modern medical team, helping doctors diagnose and treat a variety of medical conditions and diseases. DMSs work in a variety of healthcare settings, including doctor's offices, hospitals, imaging centers, and mobile ultrasound clinics. As imaging technology evolves, an increasing number of medical facilities will be using it in place of more invasive, expensive procedures. That means the demand for diagnostic medical sonographers will continue to grow. HCC's Diagnostic Medical Sonography Associates degree program can get you started. You'll get hands-on training from certified professionals using the latest equipment, methodologies, and technology as well as supervised education at approved sites. As a graduate, you'll be prepared to start your career as a diagnostic medical sonographer and sit for national certification exams. To get started on the pathway to a career in this allied health profession, visit our website or contact an HCC healthcare training advisor. You can get there from here. Now it's time for some women's volleyball, and Mike Cerrone is here to set the stage as Howard battles Hagerstown. The Dragons are 8-6, and six, starting to come together as a group, and they have a set rotation. Mike, how can they get the win? Well, let's look at our Lady Dragons right now, okay? They're 4-2 and two and have won 15 of 24 sets for, since the Charm City Tournament. So they're on a roll right now. they got to continue the momentum against the Hawks. Looking at the Hawks, I kind of go back to the book, The Tortoise and the Hare. They're kind of like the Hare. They get out very quickly, winning four of six Maryland Juco matches from the sweep. So basically, you got to continue the momentum if you're Howard, and the Dragons got to make sure they try to steal one of those first two games. Hagerstown enters the match with a battle-tested 6-7 and seven record. They're Division II. Four of their losses were against ranked Division I and Division II schools, and they're the 11-time defending D2 district champions. This is arguably the toughest test of the year for Howard. The Dragons take on Hagerstown next. First set, Autumn Bartles sets Haley Wolf on the outside. Taylor Bowen gets a hand on it. Adria Ladd and Taylor Bowen stick with their blocks to cause the error on the Hawks. The well-placed tip leads to the free ball, giving the Hawks an easy chance at a kill. Bartles sets middle. Sarah Elwood puts it away. Hagerstown wins the first set 25-21. Howard serving Hagerstown. Here's Katrina Katulski. Katrina Katulski with a rocket shot from the serve caused issues from the start of the Hawks' possession. Katulski cuts the lead to three. Dragons looking to even the match, send it over. Bartles sets Heather Groves on the right side. She crushes it. The free ball by Howard gives the Hawks' Heather Groves an opportunity for the cross-court swing. Hagerstown is on a 14-8 run, looking to take a commanding two-set lead. Hawks control the serve. That was a beautiful back set by Autumn Bartles. Hard shot. Howard can't return it, and Hagerstown wins the set. Third set, 10-3 Hagerstown. Taylor to Elwood. With a huge save, Brandy Kreiser ignites the comeback. Tulsi calls for the ball and places it near side for a Howard point. Kreiser sends it over. Wolf passes to Taylor. Outside to Malbright, and she hammers it. Time is running out for the Dragons. Howard is on a 7-3 run. Kreiser serving. Bartles likes the matchup on the right side. Turned away. Huge block. By Ladd and Katulski gives the Dragons the lead here late in the third game. 
Howard's on a 12-4 run. Mickey Aguirre on the serve. Bardo sets right again, this time to Elwood. Brockington is there. Howard completes the game on another crucial block. And on to game four we go. Elwood passes to Taylor. Outside to Wolf, powerful right hand shot. Hagerstown gets another huge kill from Haley Wolf to get the momentum back in their favor. Trina Katolski keeping the Dragons in it with a good save and place tip for the point. Howard concedes the free ball. Bartles to Mowbray. Precision kill right on the line. 6-2 run for Hagerstown. Bartles runs it up the gut to Elwood. Hagerstown wins the match three sets to one. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Katrina, this was a good match, almost came back. What are your thoughts after this one? Um, I thought we played tough. Um, we definitely gave our best game. Um, defense was really good. Everything was collectively really awesome. It seemed like you were really placing the ball very well today. Did you feel good coming into the match? Um, I felt good. I felt like our warm-up was a little bit slow, but um, as soon as we got out there, we hustled for the ball, everything. Um, placing the ball was awesome. We found a lot of open spots on the other side of the court, which was great. Found the other team's weaknesses. Katrina, a great match. Best of luck going forward. Thank you. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. My first guest coached the Under Armour Elite Volleyball Club 15s and the Carroll Vipers Volleyball Club 17-18s. This is his first season at Howard Community College. Head coach Gary Troy is here. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Glad to be here. Assess your team's performance against Hagerstown. Uh, we struggled a little bit in serve-receive, uh, but the effort was there throughout. Uh, we got behind uh, a couple times and came right back, got even, and then, as you well know, uh, a lot of times when you use all that effort to get even, and then you kind of fall short after that because now you take a little breather in that. But I think that's where the girls were last night. Uh, um, we knew that Hagerstown would be a tough team. They have been for years. And um, the girls were looking forward to the challenge. And overall, I thought we did a, a good job. So who's stepping up right now for you? Um, well, we've had a, a few players. Like I said, Adria has been doing a great job. Kayla uh, Brockington has come along. She came in partway into the season. Um, and uh, Brandy uh, Kaiser has been, uh, she's been fantastic. We've used her all over the place. She was a setter at the beginning. We used her as a libero. We used her as a right side. We used her as a left side, I mean, uh, outside. And uh, she's a freshman also, and she's just been uh, performing at a really high level, consistently high level. Well, Coach, good luck the rest of your season, and I wish you success. Thank you. I appreciate that. Up next, Cross Country with Head Coach Steve Musselman. If you're interested in a career in the in-demand healthcare field, Howard Community College can help you get there from here. Consider working as a physical therapist assistant. PTAs work under the direction and supervision of a licensed physical therapist. They provide the services that help people increase their ability to move, reduce their pain, and prevent disability. PTAs work in a variety of settings, including hospitals, outpatient clinics, nursing homes, and sports and fitness facilities. In fact, there is already a workforce shortage of PTAs, and as the population ages, the demand for physical therapy services will continue to grow. That means there's opportunity for competitive salaries, job security, and geographical flexibility. HCC's Physical Therapist Assistant Associates degree program can get you started. You'll get hands-on training from physical therapists using the latest equipment, methodologies, and technology, as well as supervised clinical education at approved affiliation sites. As a graduate, you'll be prepared to start your career as a physical therapist assistant and sit for the national exam to get the license needed in most states. To get started on the pathway to a career in this allied health profession, visit our website or contact an HCC Healthcare Training Advisor. You can get there from here. Welcome back. My next guest brought home Howard Community College's first track and field national championship 
and coached the college's first individual cross-country national champion. Head coach Steve Musselman joins me now. Welcome, Coach. Thank you, Diane. How's your season going so far? Season's going very well. You know, we don't really have traditional wins and losses. We're about progressing towards nationals every year. Um, this past weekend, we are at Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's a big test for us because we're the only two-year school in the field, and I want to give the kids a good idea of the competition. And it's, it's pretty comparable to what we're going to see at the end of the year. Uh, the men did a fantastic job. They placed... Uh, out of the 18 schools there, they play second overall, but the important thing is we won our division. We were competing in the non-scholarship school division. And Gary Somoliak uh, was second overall. He ran, ran a great time, and it was a big breakout race for him. But I was e equally proud of some of the other guys that ran too. Now I saw that you brought home another bird. So now do you have a flock of birds in your office? We have this? six birds. They give us <clears throat> what's called an ironwood trophy. Uh, he orders them from Mexico. So I, I think I need to build a nest now because I, there's six birds on top of my bookcase. Now you mentioned Gary. He was last year's national champion. What's it like coaching him this year? Because it's really harder to repeat. It, it is really hard to repeat because of the ever-changing um, population at a community college. But he, I know he's worked harder this summer. We've been in touch quite a bit. And like I said, last weekend was a big breakthrough. He's starting to realize that, yeah, I can be the guy to beat in these races. He, he looked at uh, some of the people on the line and they're unattached runners. And he said, you know, are they unattached? I said, yeah. He goes, no, well, he, that guy looks pretty legit. And I said, well, you know, you don't look legit, but you won cross country nationals. So why don't you go out and try to win it today? And, and he almost did. You know, it's just about, you know, finding how Gary operates, what he thinks. And we've gotten much better with that with our communication. Now he's to the point now where he knows that he can run with some of the best people in the country. Thank you, Coach, and good luck the rest of your season. Thank you, Diane. Let's go to Mary Lee Adams for this month's Dragon Close-Up. HCC's women's soccer team is turning out to have quite a season, coming on strong at the right time with high hopes of being national contenders. And with so few players returning to this year's roster, the veterans have played a bigger role than ever before. Starting forward Kanifa Mullings and star defender Jordan Nowaski both have returned after a year off. Though their time away was not necessarily ideal, these players have come back with a newfound maturity and drive. I got a kidney infection right around um, mid, uh, midterm time, so I couldn't take any of my midterms. Basically took a good year out of my college experience, but that's okay. I'm actually glad that I did so that now I have the opportunity of being on this team now. Well, honestly, I was supposed to come back last year, and um, uh, I didn't have the funds to come back. So, um, but I did promise everybody that I'd be back because, you know, this is like my family. Coming back to HCC seemed to be an easy decision for these two players, mostly due to the coaching of Kate Seagroves and Athena Gramadas. She's just a great coach and great mentor all around. I mean, she's always influenced, and she's always involved in everyone's lives. Um, I told her that I wanted to return, and she did everything in her power for me to come back. And so, you know, I'm like forever indebted to her. Athena is the assistant coach. She came last year and she's totally turned the team around. When I came in this year, I was really shocked at how much she uh, really affects the team. She gives so much like information and insight to the team that we just didn't have before. As returning players, both Kanifa and Jordan bring experience and leadership to the table, valuable assets on the field and to their new teammates. I guess a big thing which just is not, comes natural to me is my speed. Um, I'm also very aggressive. Since she has returned, she knows a lot, so she's always there to answer questions from anybody who's maybe confused or needs help. Jordan's definitely our anchor back on the defense, defensive side, so she's great back there. Kanifa's just always in a good mood, always pumped up. Kanifa is just a hard worker. She's either starting for us or she's the first one off the bench, so she's very strong. Um, Jordan. I was ecstatic that she was coming back because she is, for one, she's probably the fastest person on the team. Um, she anchors our defense. If there was ever a time to come back, this may be the best year yet. Both players are ecstatic to be returning to such a strong group of girls. I have a lot of confidence in this team where everyone is just so good and everyone's so willing to come out to practice and learn and practice and do what we're supposed to. This group of girls are great. Um, they're very strong-willed. Um, they learn very quickly. I think we can you know, do better than we did last year at Nationals and take the whole thing. 
With Nationals in their sights, Kanifa and Jordan's return to HCC couldn't have come in a better time. Overcoming obstacles has not only made them stronger, but has helped to shape this team into one with a very bright future. For Dragon's Layer Update, I'm Mary Lee Adams. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. If you're interested in a career in the in-demand healthcare field, Howard Community College can help you get there from here. Consider working as a medical laboratory technician. MLTs draw blood samples, prepare lab specimens, and use microscopes and other high-powered instruments for tests that are vital to the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of disease. MLTs work in a variety of settings, from hospitals and doctor's offices to research facilities and public health organizations. In fact, medical laboratory science is the third largest medical profession in the country. And with a current shortage of lab techs in Maryland, there's opportunity for competitive salaries, job security, and career advancement. HCC's Medical Laboratory Technician Associate Degree Program can get you started. You'll get hands-on training from professional laboratory scientists using the latest equipment, methodologies, and simulation technology, as well as supervised practice at sponsoring clinical sites. As a graduate, you'll be prepared to start your career as a medical laboratory technician, sit for national certification exams, or transfer on to earn a bachelor's degree. To get started on the pathway to a career in this allied health profession, visit our website or contact an HCC healthcare training advisor. You can get there from here. Your plans for college were put on hold for service, family, job demands. But you know a college degree can help you reach your goals. You know now is the time. Howard Community College can get you there with convenient evening or weekend classes, online courses, and special collaborations. You can earn an associate's or even a bachelor's degree. Visit our website today, www.howardcc.edu slash get there. For the latest highlights, go to youtube.com slash HCC Dragon Sports. A new episode of Dragon's Lair Update premieres Friday, December 5th on HCC TV. Thanks for watching, and remember, Go Dragons!